Hello, my dear students. In this lecture, let us see how to use the data handbook for solving numericals on boiling and condensation. First, let us take on boiling. In boiling, we know that when the problem is asked, they will tell the water the boils at 100 degree centigrade, right? At atmospheric pressure. So, for solving the problem, that is to get the rate of heat transfer when the water boils at atmospheric pressure, then we need to note down certain values from the data handbook in order to solve the numerical. In the first thing is you need to get the water properties at 100 degree centigrade. Since the water boils at atmospheric pressure at 100 degree centigrade, that means the saturated temperature of the water will be 100 degree centigrade. So go to the property values table. In my book, it is page number 30. There, go to the water. For the water at temperature 100 degree centigrade, note down the density values. That is 961 kg per meter cube, then the kinematic viscosity. But we need the value of dynamic viscosity. That's why you take this kinematic viscosity, multiply by rho, you will get the dynamic viscosity value. Then note down the Brownell number, the specific heat. These are all under suffix L. It is rho L, mu L, then come to mu L, then it is PR, C, this is a CL, specific heat of the liquid and KL, thermal conductivity of the liquid. This is the first step. Next step, you have to note down these property values since the steam for the vapor condition. So vapor condition means you have to go to the steam. That is under the table property values of gases at one atmospheric pressure. So at one atmospheric pressure, the steam at 100 degree centigrade, we need to note down the values. So it is at page number 47 in this book. So go to the steam table at 100 degree centigrade, note down the density value here. The second column he is directly has given mu, that is absolute viscosity. It is represented by mu v. This is rho v, mu v. Then it is Brownell number. It is PRV. Then you have the specific heat, CPV, specific heat value. Then you have the thermal conductivity. So KV, conductivity values. So all these values you need to note down. Okay. Then go to the boiling section in the data handbook. It is page number 151 in my book. So in the boiling section, go to nucleate boil. You have two sections, nucleate and stable film boiling. This nucleate boiling is used when the delta T, that is when the difference in temperature between the vapor as well as the surface temperature. When this temperature difference is less than 50 degrees centigrade, we go for nucleate boiling. If it is more than 50 degrees centigrade, we go for stable film boiling. In nucleate boiling, to get the rate of heat transfer or the heat flux, we use this formula. This formula, first one is mu L that I have already said, mu L is, dynamic viscosity of the liquid. If you don't know, you can just check it here, dynamic viscosity of the liquid. Then HFG, that is latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat of vaporization, you have to get this value HFG and also you have sigma, the surface tension. So you go to the, continue the pages, then when you go here, see, this is that, page number 153 in my book. So you'll get the latent heat of vaporization for water and surface tension for water. So if it is at 100 degree centigrade for boiling, normally you use the same value. That is HFG equals 2256.9 and surface tension, if it is at, it will be around 0 0.0588 at 100 degree centigrade. 
okay then go back to the same boiling formula in the boiling formula this is rho l density of the liquid we have already obtained from the water table then they are at 100 degrees centigrade density of vapor again we have obtained then c this is not one it is l c l is the specific heat here you can see specific heat of the liquid whenever you say liquid you have to obtain the formulas from the water table then delta t this delta t is nothing but the excess temperature that is the surface temperature the wall temperature minus saturation temperature if it is less than 50 you need to go for nucleate body then csf csf here it is a constant go to page number 152 just next page this is 151 next page you go here this is CS, csf here you have the combination of surface and the liquid and for those the constant properties if the liquid is water and generally we use water here and the surface should be a copper or platinum brass so these surfaces so normally we go for this copper in the copper water copper combination or water emery polished combination emery polished copper so the cfs value is 0 0.013 and if it is emery good is 0 0.0 one two eight if it is with water with when it is boiled with the brass container you have to go and use 0 0.0060 this is the csf value for nucleate boiling hfg we know pronal number we have noted down the pronal number okay so this is about the liquid itself then substitute power point three then you'll get the rate of heat transfer if in the problem they asked to find out the critical heat flux then you need to use this formula and substitute the again the properties which we have already obtained from the liquid properties as well as the vapor properties which you have obtained previously but for solving critical heat flux problems we need to take the properties at the film temperature which is nothing but the average of wall temperature and the desaturated temperature next let's go to the film boiling in this film boiling again the film boiling means it is delta t which is greater than 50 degrees centigrade we can test the film boiling wherein the radiation term comes into factor so here you need to find out the heat transfer coefficient due to convection as well as heat transfer coefficient due to radiation and take this the summation of these two in this way to get the h where h is the average heat transfer coefficient here in this case for solving the problems we need to take at the film temperature here film temperature is nothing but the again average of the surface temperature and the liquid temperature Again, we know all these values, Kv, we know, right, conductivity of vapor. So all these properties, we have to go to the steam table and the, not at 100 degrees centigrade, but is at the average temperature, average temperature. Okay, Royal, Rho V, again, Royal is again at a uh, liquid table, Rho V is at vapor table hfg we know we have seen just now the hfg table go to that average temperature and that point you take the hfg value cpv value again vapor cp value and substitute get the heat transfer coefficient for the for convection again for radiation you use this but please make sure when you are using radiation the t should be always in the uh, kelvin scale okay substitute you'll get the average heat value then if you want to get the heat transfer coefficient rate of heat transfer the heat flux value then you need to use this equation this is about the boiling now let's go to the condensation go to the condensation section yes this is the condensation section in the condensation section you need you'll have the vertical surfaces horizontal tubes bank of tubes so you will use only these three sections so when the same when it is vertical you have to use this
right we will go to this vertical section so in this vertical section this is delta x so you need to find out the thickness of the boundary layer at a given distance so when it is at a x distance delta x you will find out at k x can be any distance given it can be the distance a part of the distance from the length of the surface or if x x becomes equal to l when that is delta l means it is the thickness of the boundary layer at the end of the plate then other things you need to then get the values me see one more thing you need to know is while using the condensation you have to consider the properties at the film temperature which is nothing or the fluid temperature which is nothing but the average of vapor temperature and the surface temperature so find the value of delta x again you know mu l it is the density uh, the dynamic viscosity of the liquid again it's at average then k k value is conductivity this x x is the distance at which we need to find out the boundary layer thickness hfg as i said shown previously the here you have to take the hfg values there and the density rho values so all these at the density again density of rho means it is density of the liquid only so for the liquid go to the find out the density of the liquid and get the delta x value and to find out the hx that is heat transfer coefficient at that location x that means local heat transfer coefficient you have to so uh, substitute in this equation it is nothing but k by delta x where k, where k is the again thermal conductivity k again of the liquid okay if you want the average heat transfer coefficient you have to go h is equal to 4 by 3 l that means add the, you have to find out the hl by substituting the delta l here delta at l and substitute here get the value of hl and then 4 by 3 hl you will get the average heat transfer coefficient over the entire surface if you want the local heat transfer coefficient you can use this equation but if you want the average heat transfer coefficient you have to use this equation to use this equation again find the hl value hl value is first you have to get the delta l value using that means the Place of the boundary layer at the end of the plate. Replace x by l here. You get the delta l. Then h l k by delta l is the h l. Then if you want the average, you get h is equal to four by three h l. If they have not asked in the problem at any location l x, then directly you can use this formula. If the only average heat transfer coefficient is used, directly use this formula where h is nothing but the average heat transfer. coefficient all these three for the vertical surfaces it can can be the tube or the plate if you go then use the h value once you get the h value to find the q q is equal to h into a into delta t a is the surface area and delta t that is the difference between the uh, surface temperature and the sorry here first it is higher temperature to saturated t Yes, T saturated minus vapor temperature minus surface temperature. Okay, then go to the if the problems were asked based on the horizontal tubes, go to this section for the horizontal tubes. You use this formula, and you have to substitute by D. You have to use the diameter value while using for horizontal sections. For vertical, you will use the L value, length of the plate value. so this is for horizontal tubes if some they ask for the bank of tubes that means if you have so many n number of tubes then you have to um, find out the heat transfer coefficient using this formula where here n is number of the horizontal rows if the play if they say if the square cross section of 225 tubes if they say like this then you have to go ahead that means 225 is the overall tubes there are total tubes both in the horizontal as well as vertical section is 225 in that case you have to take the square root of 225 that is will get as 15 that means 15 rows number of rows horizontal rows you have to substitute not the total number of tubes you have to substitute here number of rows of tubes as for the n then d is the diameter of each tube 
will get the value of h that is average heat transfer coefficient then once you get the average heat transfer coefficient substitute in the rate of heat transfer q value h a delta t we substitute n also there h a n delta t and get the total heat transfer from the bundle of tubes thank you